Hello, I'm making this video because I feel like even the most updated version of the official guide on how to set up a pixel lobby is kind of not very good. And I also know there's a lot of people who prefer to watch a video instead of reading, so this is for you. First thing we need to get out of the way is that you're going to need to port forward your router. The ports you need to forward are 27018 and 7777. The process for port forwarding is different for every router, so your best bet is to just Google how to port forward your specific router. It's usually pretty easy to find instructions for any router. There's also a very simple piece of software called Simple Port Forwarding, or SPF, that supposedly works with most routers. It's worked fine for me with the couple ones I've tried it. There's gonna be a link to that in the description. The next thing you have to do is download and install SteamCMD. There will be a link for that in the description as well. After you've done that, you need to create a folder for the server files. You can name it whatever you want, but maybe calling it TFH server or something similar would be a good idea. All right, now that we have the folder, we're going to run SteamCMD and we're going to enter the following commands. Login anonymous. This will log you in. Then you're gonna type force underscore install underscore dir, then a space and then the path to the folder we just created in between quotation marks. This will tell SteamCMD where to save the files we're going to download. The next command is app underscore update space 643090 space validate. This last command will actually download all the files we need to the folder we assigned with the previous command. Now we just gotta wait a little bit for all the files to download and then we can close the SteamCMD by typing exit. And now you can get rid of SteamCMD and never have to worry about it ever again. <laughs> Just kidding, you're gonna need to use SteamCMD again to update your lobby whenever there's a new patch. I guess you can still get rid of it and download it again whenever you need it, that's up to you. Now we have all the files we're gonna need, but before we can get the server up and running, we have to configure it. To do that, go into the folder you made for the lobby files. There should be a folder in there called config. Go into that folder and create a new text file. Rename it to server.cfg, making sure to remove the txt extension. This is the file your server is gonna read its settings from, and now we're gonna set that up. You might notice that I'm using Notepad++ to open it, but don't worry, you can also open it with good old normal Notepad. Or Warpad, if you're feeling adventurous. Little aside here, there should be a file called server underscore template.cfg. This file is a template of the server.cfg file. You could just copy that file and rename it to server.cfg and then just modify the contents of it to whatever you want and that would work fine. But for the purposes of this video, I'll be making our server.cfg from scratch. Anyway, once you open the server.cfg we just created, you're gonna write the following. Server underscore name. And then between quotation marks, whatever you want your server's name to be. I'll call mine Enmus super cool server. Region underscore code. Here you're gonna type the region your server is on. You can get a list of codes from the server template file. I'm West Coast, so I'll set it to three since that's the code for West Coast. Map underscore name. This tells the lobby what map to use. This is one of those things that the official guide doesn't really explain very well. There are currently only three valid settings you can use here. Arizona Lobby 2, which sets the lobby to the Pumelon Plains. Velvet Lobby, which sets the lobby to Rain City and Paprika Lobby, which sets the lobby to the Alpaca Highlands. Anyway, choose whichever one you want and enter it after the equal sign. I'll set mine to rain because I'm a filthy velvet main. Now you're gonna enter these lines without changing them. Here's another setting that isn't really explained in the official guide. Allow underscore dungeon underscore play. This is what controls whether or not the salt mines will be available on your lobby. Setting it to true will make salt mines work normally, Setting it to false will disable it. Pretty simple. I'll set mine to true. And the last thing that is not explained anywhere, there's not even a reference to it in the template file. Max players. This sets the player limit for your lobby. And this is important because if you don't set it up, the lobby will, for some reason, default to only a maximum of 20 players, which is less than what the official lobbies use. Hey main six, if you're watching, it would probably be a good idea to change this to default to 26 since that's the current cap for the official lobbies. I don't understand why the setting is not even mentioned in the server template file. I'll set mine to 26, since that's the official cap. All right, so that's the basic configuration of your server. 
If you just want to get a simple public lobby up and running, you can now save the changes and skip to this part of the video. The following steps are only necessary if you want to set up a private lobby. On the last patch, Main6 added the option to password protect your lobbies. There are two ways you can do that. Right now, I'm going to show you one of them. On your server.cfg file, you're going to add the following line. Passcode equals, and then you're going to enter the passcode you want. The passcode can be up to 8 inputs long, and it is entered using the directional inputs in the game, excluding diagonals. The config file will accept both letter or numpad notation. So if you want your password to be, say, left, down, right, up, down, you'll enter either passcode equals L, D, R, U, D, or passcode equals 42682. All right, that's the last setting we need on this file. Now, if you're going to be running a password protected server, you might want to save yourself the hassle of having to enter the passcode every time you want to access your own server. Fortunately, you can set users of your choosing as moderators. To do this, we're gonna have to create another CFG file named mods.cfg. In this file, you're gonna open and close square brackets, and then between the brackets, you're going to enter your Steam ID between quotation marks. Your Steam ID is a unique identifier assigned to your Steam account. If you haven't assigned a custom vanity ID to your profile, it will be the numbers after the last slash on your Steam profile's URL. If you have a custom URL like I do, you can go to this website, enter whatever's after ID slash on your profile's URL and click Get Steam ID. We're interested in the numbers after Steam ID 64. Copy those and paste them into your mods.cfg file. You can also enter your friends' IDs if you want them to be able to get in without a passcode, or anyone else you want to have easy access to your lobby, really. After you save this file, anyone listed in it will be able to enter your lobby without needing a password. Alright, that's the last file we're gonna have to mess with. Now we're ready to get our server up and running. Let's go back to the Windows Explorer and then go back to the folder you downloaded the files on. You should have a file called lobbyserver.bat. Double click on that bad boy. A command window should open up, and then it's gonna start the process of getting your server running. You're going to see a lot of red error messages, but as long as you follow this guide properly, you really shouldn't worry about those. Once the text stops scrolling, your server should be up and running. There it is. Your lobby will be up for as long as you keep this window running, and it will stop whenever you close it. All right, I did say there was another way to set up a password for your lobby. The other way is to go into your lobby, open the chat, and then type forward slash passcode, then a space, and then the passcode you want. Again, either use letters or numpad notation. If you do it this way, it will only be temporary, and it will go back to whatever settings you have on your actual server.cfg after you restart the server. You can also use this command to temporarily remove the password by just sending the command forward slash passcode without entering an actual passcode. Again, this will be reset to your normal settings when you restart the lobby. Here's one last thing you might want to do, and that is not really explained anywhere. You might have noticed that whenever you join a lobby, you get a message in chat that says standard server message. You can actually change this to say whatever you want whenever someone joins. To do this, you need to be in the lobby and you need to be an admin. Open the chat and type forward slash MOTD space and then whatever message you want people to see when they join. Now just leave the lobby and rejoin to check if it worked. There it is. As far as I know, right now, this is the only way to set up a custom message. I couldn't find any settings you could add or change on the server CFG or any other files to set a custom message besides doing this. This also means it will be set back to standard server message whenever you close your lobby, and you'll have to set it up through the chat again every time you start it up. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this guide. I hope you guys found it useful and I'll try to make an updated version of it if Main6 ever changes anything about how this works in the future. Now, if besides technical stuff, you're also interested in watching TFH gameplay and hanging out with a really cool community, remember that I stream Them's Fighting Herds on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, starting at around 5 p.m. UTC-7. And if you also want to hang out with me and the community off stream, you can join my Discord. Links to both my Twitch and my Discord will be in the description. And there will also be links down there for all of my other social media, in case you're into that. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I love you all and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.